Okay, to do the mini tab assignment, the first thing you'll want to do is you'll want to go to the assignments folder. Um, so when you're in the course, click on assignments. And then this is, this should be how you view it as a student, roughly. Um, and you can click on either of these links. They're the same link. Um, and so click on that to download. Um, and that should go to your downloads. And then what we want to do is we want to log into Minitap. Um, and you'll have to go through several steps to get logged in the very first time. Uh, and if you have trouble with that, your look for your email address um, in your Austin P email. Look for the email from Minitab uh, that lets you get the link. And if that link has expired, then what you'll need to do is do forgot password using your Austin P email address and then log in through that. And once you get all logged in, you should see something like this. We want to do open local file um, and we want to, um, we just downloaded it already from the assignments folder. And so we go to our downloads area and get the download. And then um, we want to go ahead and put whatever your last name is here. I'll put my last name. Um, and then we'll put the numbers that we gathered um, and uh, okay, so we put our numbers that we gathered. Um, and then there are already numbers in here. Leave those in there. By the way, if you have to step away um, and you've already done some work and you want to save your work, um, it'll constantly say not currently saved, and we're going to leave it like that because there's it's too much trouble to save it. Um, you've got to link it to all this stuff, and it's just it's not worth it. So anytime you walk away, go ahead and um, say, um, up here at this carrot across the top, um, just say download and it'll download the file um, at the current as it currently is. So uh, you'll have the current version. And that way, if you walk away and it times out on you, because it will time out on you if you walk away for more than just a few minutes, you'll have your file saved. So um, it, you know, if you're going to um, run away and grab a cup of water and come right back and you're sure you're going to come back, that's you know, I wouldn't bother, but otherwise I would go ahead and download the file. Uh, and so then we want um, to be sure to read all of the instructions that are attached with this um, to make sure that you've done every single thing right. Um, because in order to get credit, you really need to do all the stuff that's especially the colored parts of the instructions. Um, so you'll want to read those um, and be sure that you're getting them all correct. Uh, and then, um, and I guess I could show you the instructions. These are the mini tab instructions. So all of these are what the mini tab instructions look like. This is the old video and I'm going to replace it um, when I get done recording this one. And then uh, what we want to do is um, we want to uh, have a Microsoft file that lists the 10 age values. Um, so we would do like zero and we would list the, the 10 ages that I just put in um, here. So, and I can make this bigger or smaller as I want. So I could do the 18 comma 22 comma 17 um, and I'm not going to do the rest of it. And then um, one and uh, then for the next few, I would, um, you can do a whole bunch of these together. So, um, and I'll show you how to do basically all the things that Minitab can do from our formula card. 
I'm going to show you how to do those um, so that you'll have an idea of how to do the types of things in Minitab. And then everything in here is stuff that you could do on the calculator. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through our formula card and all of the major calculator functions. I'm going to show you how to do them in Minitab. Um, and so that, uh, but I'm not going to tell you which function is which needs to go with which number because if I did the whole thing, then I would be doing the assignment for you. Um, and so part of it is learning, learning the new software. I'm going to show you how to do every single thing, but I'm not going to tell you like which is which number. And, and so hopefully um, you'll be able to read these and recognize um, which go with which function because you would know like how to compute the standard deviation on the calculator um, and you'd use that same sort of function here um, in Minitab that corresponds to it. So what we'll go through now, um, the first thing I want to show you is how to do a histogram, a scatter plot, or a box plot. Um, and actually you can do all three um, in one function. Um, and it includes one of our stats. So um, we've got histogram, scatter plot, box plot, and one of our stats. And it even does more than one of our stats. All of that can be found under stat and then basic statistics. So if it were me doing it, I would read through the instructions and try to pack as many um, statistics in, in here from the first um, few questions as I could, because I'll, almost all of the first few questions um, can be done with this function. Um, so uh, I've selected display descriptive statistics, and then I in here I want to click on this, and I used to be able to double click. Okay, there we go. We can still double click and get it over there. And then um, I want to statistics. And so if um, your instructions ask you for the variance, then you could check variance. If it asks you for the range, you could check range. If it asks you for the sum of squares, you could check the sum of squares. So you can go through your list and see what statistics you need and check the corresponding statistics. And if you don't need them, you can uncheck them, but you could just leave them checked too. And then graphs, again, go through your list and see which graphs you need. If you need histogram, check histogram. If you need histogram with the normal curve added to it, check that one. And really, if it asks for a histogram, either one of those is fine. Um, if you need the individual value plot, check the individual value plot. If you need the box plot, check the box plot. Um, and then OK, and then OK. And then what that gives us is, and I can even, is this all of them? OK, yeah, I think that is all of them. So I've got all of these. Um, and if I scroll down, I've got um, the the histogram, the histogram that has a normal curve drawn on top of it. And really, these are the same histograms. This is showing you, um, this is the heights of the bars if it followed a normal distribution. And you can see this bar kind of stands out because it's too tall. Um, and then this bar stands out because it's too short. Um, and this bar, bar is too tall and this one's a little too short. So you can kind of see, yeah, it's roughly, but it's not exactly a normal distribution. Um, and then here you've got uh, an individual value plot, and that might be similar to another plot that's asked for. Um, and uh, then you've got the box plot. And so those are your different plots. And then, um, oh, let me show you how to copy. So any of these, if you select them, um, then you can see that you've got right next to it a little carrot. Um, and you may not see the carrot until you've kind of selected it. But when you see the carrot, you can do copy table or copy graph. Um, and then uh, you can just hit paste 
um, and it will paste the stuff for you. And even though this is kind of messy, I would leave it exactly as it is, even though it's messy, because that tells me that you've copied and pasted it and you've not edited it. So in other words, you didn't create this, you, you got it from Minitab. And that gives it actually more validity instead of less. Um, if we wanted to copy the graph, same thing, copy, and then um, going back to Word, click paste, um, and there it is. So um, that's how you're going to do your copying and your pasting. And then uh, that gives us one bar stats, the histogram, the scatter plot. Um, not the scatter plot. We actually haven't done the scatter plot yet. Uh, so that would be under graph and scatter plot. But we actually don't have enough information to do a scatter plot. I don't think, because I think we need two variables, right? Yeah, we need two variables in it. We don't have two variables, so um, we don't have enough information for the scatter plot. But we have done uh, the histogram and the box plot. Um, let's see, binome PDF and binome CDF. Um, we don't actually need to do those, so I'm going to skip those because there's nothing that asks for. There, there is, though, normal CDF and inverse norm uh, that we've just been doing. So that is under calc. Um, so if you go to the calc menu and probability distributions, CDF, cumulative distribution function, that's exactly what that is. So this um, will do the CDF and we'll choose normal and that'll be a normal CDF. Um, and then this one will be an inverse of the cumulative distribution function. So it's actually the inverse CDF. So um, CDF, I can tell it uh, the value and I really should be getting these values. Is it gonna let me well, it's probably not going to let me. Let me let me go back up and scroll up so I can. Um, so I really should be getting these values from Minitab. Um, so I shouldn't. I should everything I everything I do in this Minitab project should be calculating with Minitab. So um, if I if I wanted to find um, the number of students for less than 20 years of age. I could do a value of 20 because um, that's going to find the students who are less than 20. And I can tell the mean is 24 for my data, 0.5941. And my standard deviation is um, 2.7610. Eight. And then I'll select OK. And it tells me that the probability of being less than 20 is this 0 0.048. So 4.8% chance. Um, and again, you know, if you want to copy this one, you can select that um, to copy and put in your mini tab. With every single question that you're asked in the entire individual mini tab project, you'll want to put the mini tab output that tells you your answer, and you'll want to give your answer like in words. So for instance, um, if this has said the probability of being less than 20 years of age um, for this number two, then I would um, paste my results and I would say the probability um, of being less than 20 is 0 0.048064. And, and then I would go on to the, like, the next question if that was the question for that one. And then um, data, 
Oh wait, calc. Um, probability distributions in the inverse. So let's say I wanted to find the 95th percentile of age. Um, And so the 95th percentile of age then would be um, the 29, somebody who is 29. Now, this may not be an accurate reflection, especially of Fort Campbell students, because um, I, don't, I don't think that would be the 95th percentile for Fort Campbell students. I don't know how they got the data that was already in here, because, um, you know, only 10 of the data values were the, the ones that I put in there. So I don't know how they got the others, the other data values, um, whether it was real data values that were randomly selected or not. That would be interesting to know. And um, then, oh yeah, we want our confidence intervals and our hypotheses test. Those are under statistics. And then basic statistics. So the same place that we did our very first function, we have um, the one sample Z, the one sample T. That's the same thing as our Z test or our Z interval and our T test or our T interval. We don't do anything with two sample um, or paired. Um, and then we have one prop. So that's like the one prop Z int and the one prop z test. So this one's like z test and z interval. This one's like t test and t interval. And this one is like the one prop z interval and the one prop z test. Once you get into each of these functions, you tell it, um, it does the interval by default. You select if you want to do the test. So um, let's test. Um, let's suppose that we wanted to do a z-test. Um, let's suppose that we were given the population standard deviation, and so we wanted to do the known population standard deviation, and we were told that that was um, 3 point, um, well, that, that seems large. Let's do 1.7. Uh, well, that seems small. 2.2. <laughs> It's probably wrong too, but that's okay. Um, and so I got my values in there, and I want to, um, let's do, first I want to perform an interval. Um, let's look at the options. Okay, yeah, that looks that looks fine. And, and I've already done a graph of this data, so I don't, all those graphs, so I don't really need those. Um, and so this gives me the interval. And then uh, if I want to do a test, um, of Z test. Let's, let's say I decided the Z was the appropriate one. And I, so I want to do perform hypothesis test. And this time I want to perform the hypothesis that the average age is greater than 22. Um, and select OK. And, uh, or, oh, I did not equal to because I forgot to select the greater than. So let me change that um, stat one sample Z. It remembered everything. And then um, in the options, that's where I can change it to greater than. And then OK. And now I have the probability of being greater than 22 um, or, or you know, the the p-value for being greater than 22, um, and that's zero. Uh, and and so you, if you want, if you like, oh, I want to go back to that other function that I just did, that's under Navigator. So Navigator, um, you can go back to your first, your all of these functions that you've done through Navigator, by the way. And then if you want to close Navigator back, you just 
hit navigator and again and it opens and it closes so um, and we want to do let's say we want to um, look at the interval for proportions um, uh, the, that would be stat basic statistics and one proportion and then I would get my data um, And let's say I want to perform a hypothesis test um, of the proportion of students actually strike that. So what we want to do first before we do that um, is we want to do a tally. And so stat tables, and we want to do a tally so that we know how many of our data values are a certain way. And what we'll do, we'll do um, the number of students who are over 27 years of age is less than 10%. That'll be our hypothesis. Um, so the number of students who are over 27, um, that's going to be um, the 17. So um, so we won't count 27 because they're, they're 27, but over 27. So 10, 3, 3, and 1. So that's going to be 17 of our 101. So we'll go to stat basic statistics and one proportion and we're going to select summarize data because it'll be a lot easier to do it this way um, and so we have 17 X's 17 that are um, over the age of 27 out of our N so that's like our X that would prompt us in the one prop Z int and the one prop Z test our N is 101 um, and we could just do this if we wanted to get the confidence interval. Um, and then if we wanted to uh, do um, the hypothesis test, we click perform hypothesis test. Um, and then I want to do 0 0.10 and I want to do greater than greater than um, and I didn't change this because this is probably the best option the most accurate option to use um, is the one that was selected by default but if you want it to be what your calculator says you could change this to normal approximation by the way um, so you can do that for the confidence interval as well um, I'm not going to do it for either of them. I'll just leave it the default. But if you wanted to confirm with your calculator that you're getting the same answer, then the normal approximation is the one that your calculator uses. Um, and so then this uh, does the the confidence or, or the um, the hypothesis test, and it gives you the p-value there for um, the proportion being more than 10%. And let's, let's see if there's anything. Um, I'm missing linear regression, but we don't have two variables. So we won't be able to do linear regression. Um, and I did, I did skip over the binome. So let me go back to it. So if you wanted to do binomial distributions, Um, the binome CDF would be this function, the binome PDF would be this function. But once we select it, see how it says normal by default, we would then 
um, scroll up and it's kind of off of your screen, but up at the very top um, of my screen, it says binomial. And so I select it. And then you could do the X's and the P's, um, or actually this is your N, your number of trials and your P, and this will be your X. So um, you could do it that way for, um, and then it would be very similar for the binome CDF as well um, to do that. And so that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Again, at the end to download, you would uh, click download once you're all finished with everything. And then um, you would see that it's downloading a .mpx file. Now, one thing that, um, that I get comments on all the time, which is fine, um, and I'll probably still get comments, uh, is that when you double click this, it's not gonna open up because it's not gonna know what program to open it with. So if you wanna open this, um, then uh, what you would do, you could close this out and it says we haven't saved it, but we've downloaded it, which is the same as saving it. So yes, we're sure we wanna leave. And then we could just open that file and so um, now I do want to rename my file. And, um, uh, let's see. Oh, I can't rename it from here. But let me let me rename it before. Um, and what did it tell me to name it? Um, I I can't remember what it told me to name it, but I will. Um, put my name in there. And that's probably a good a good thing to name it if it doesn't tell you. Um, but don't change the .mpx because we want that there. Now on a PC, I don't know if it'll show you the extension. Um, but on a Mac, don't change the MPX. And then when we go to open our local file, we can open the, the Smith one and um, we can make sure, whoop, <laughs> let's see if it'll go back to it. Okay, there we go. Um, so I've got all my data still here and when you scroll fast, it takes it a while to catch up. Um, but I've got all my data still here uh, and if I go to Navigator, I've got all the functions that I've already done still here uh, so you can see all of those. So let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.